Okay. Um, yeah, so we're going to get right into it. I know, uh, you know, most of you know Jerry already, and um, uh, I will do a short introduction because most of you know him, but um, sorry. So Jerry, you know Jerry as the chairman of FMBR, and, um, but he is a scientist by training and temperament. I think um, he has spent more than 40 years in the pharmaceutical and biotechnology industries, he has founded a number of companies such as Chemtrack, Oculex Pharmaceuticals, Livionix, Nuvora, and Visionex. For more than 20 years, his passionate interests have been in the area of mind being, consciousness, and the nature of reality, which we benefit from greatly. Thank you. Um, he is the author of two books. The first one is The Seeker and the Teacher of Light, where he talked about science and, and the, um, the work of Joachim Wipich. And the second book was called um, uh, Science, Subtle Energies and Spirituality, A Path to I Am. Um, and you're working on a third one as well, right, Jerry? That's correct. Okay, maybe you'll talk about that as well. So, um, and this evening he's joined us to talk about chi. He's been doing a lot of research on chi with, um, you know, the subtle energy and biogeometry, super fascinating. So welcome, Jerry. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me uh, speak on the subject. It's a fascinating subject. And uh, uh, if you want, I can start sharing the screen and uh, yeah. dive right in. Mm. OK, let me put screen share like that. And uh, hopefully you can see the screen. <clears throat> Yeah, what I'll be talking about are is chi, and you learn about this through qigong or tai chi and even karate. Um, but there are some new things that uh, I've observed in, during this past year, and I thought I'd relate that information uh, to everybody. Let me see how to advance this slide. There it goes. <clears throat> What's our objectives of this presentation? Well, people have never measured the field of qi or qi before. People talk about it, people in qigong may feel it, but to the Western world, uh, what is it and how do you measure it? Is it something that you can uh, truly do some quantitation on? And uh, what we're gonna be doing today is getting into how one can measure it and why one can measure it. And also we'll talk about chi throughout life because chi does change throughout life. You're born with a high level and at death it goes down to zero. So we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about how to build up chi. And we exist in different planes, uh, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual planes, the chi exists in these planes also. And the values of the, uh, that chi in these various planes also are different. And uh, it's fascinating how they are different. Uh, and we'll get into that. And if chi does change throughout life and it's going down throughout life, are there ways that one might be able to increase chi? Maybe. But uh, I've played around a bit with that and I'll uh, relate my experiences in, in that area. And I also want to give credit to Meg Loon, who's a very good friend and she's an amazing uh, person in terms of testing and measuring energies and subtle energies using the tools of radiesthesia. So she is one of the persons that I go to uh, when I start measuring things and she'll make her observations, I'll make my observations. And there are a few others who do this, but uh, Meg is, is very good at this. And I will come to some conclusions, but don't forget this is limited data. And in Qigong, you have thousands of years of information. What I'm talking about are information that I've accumulated over the past number of months. Uh, but no one else has ever measured subtle energies and they don't know how to do that, whereas we do. And that, I think, gives us an advantage in 
getting an understanding that uh, people have not had in the past. In order to understand Qi and its measurements, I do have to go through and uh, talk about subject matters that uh, you may already have uh, uh, been exposed to in, in the past. But if I don't talk about some of these subject matters, when I talk about BG3 or 369 or GANs or magnetic fields or resonance or radiesthesia, some of you will scratch your head and uh, especially the people who knew uh, into these areas. So I have to do a little bit of explaining of some of these various concepts. And a lot of these concepts are uh, described in my books, The Seeker and the Teacher of Light and Science, Subtle Energies and Spirituality of Path to I Am. But uh, I feel I need to do a little bit of ex explanation simply because I think people will get lost if I don't do it. So I apologize for those who do know about these fields. Uh, but I think uh, for the majority of folks who will be looking at the, the YouTubes uh, and the videos and Zooms, uh, they may not understand that. So I'll go through them fairly quickly, but I, I still need to do that just to enable people to understand what is going on. Let me see if I can move. Uh, okay. I don't know if my picture is in the way of, of the screen uh, of the words or not. Uh, it's no, in my... can, you can see it. You can see it. Okay. So it's just blocking me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can change that to prevent it from blocking me, but that, that's okay. <clears throat> I looked up uh, Qi in the typical Wikipedia uh, and Google. And it talks about the meaning, literally meaning vapor, air, uh, breath. And in Chinese, qi is breath. And that it is a polysemous word. And often used, uh, words other use, that are used are vital energy, vital force, uh, material energies or energy. And then it talks about qi as a mystical concept traditional Chinese medicine, and in Chinese martial arts. Uh, in the attempt to cultivate and balance qi is called qigong. Two key words there, polysemus, simus, which I didn't know too much about that word before, <laughs> and mythical, which I know. Uh, so I looked it up, polysemus, having more than one meeting. And then if you look up the synonyms for polysemus, Cryptic, dubious, enigmatic, equivocal, inconclusive, obscure, opaque, puzzling, questionable, uncertain, unclear, and vague. Okay. Um, and that's how the Western world probably looks at Qi. And that plus, plus the word mythical describes Qi to most people, I think. Hmm. For those who have practiced Qigong or who have done Tai Chi or even a little bit of karate, uh, it has a different meaning. And for the Qigong folks and the Tai Chi folks, they know Qi is real and they can feel the energies of Qi. And you can feel it as a weight and as a sensation. And you can't see Qi and I can't see it, and I'll describe how to do that. It's used in healing, it's used in the martial arts, and it's also stored in the area of the body under beneath the navel. That area is called the Dantian. So <clears throat> I'll give a little history of, of my background with Qi, simply because I think it's uh, sort of interesting. I've played around with it for many years in different ways. And I thought I'd just uh, describe that because in describing it, it'll enable me to describe how I built up Qi in my old Qigong days uh, and uh, even my own old karate days. Back in the 70s, um, I joined a karate group, just a class, just to see what that was all about. And... Uh, they taught us katas. 
And in katas, you do a series of dance with movements of blocks and kicks. And the key of the katas, in addition to the movements and the blocks and the kicks, is that uh, how you use force and how you use breath. And so in the katas, you'd give a yell, a very loud yell every time you block or punch or kick. And that is really a key way of focusing energies and focusing the chi. And that, that yell is called a ki. And again, that's a word that no one ever really uses except those who know karate. And so I learned that and I did, worked on that for a few months. But my karate days were short-lived. Uh, one day I decided to do a little bit of sparring. I had never done that before. And I blocked the kick. And I was going to grab the, uh, the uh, gi from, uh, and try to toss the other person. And uh, then I looked at my finger. And my finger was now, instead of being the normal four inches or five inches or so, was now two inches. And I, my finger had dislocated and it moved all the way down to, to my knuckles. <laughs> and I looked at my finger and said, oh, that can't be right. And I just grabbed my fingers and pulled hard and pulled it back into shape. But that ended my karate uh, career. Uh, <clears throat> but then uh, I went into, I started learning more. By 2003, um, my back was bothering me a little bit. So I said, okay, I'll do some yoga and maybe that'll uh, loosen my lower back. And the class started and there was a very interesting guy, Guy Harriman was the teacher. Uh, and uh, he was into energy and energy Qigong. So we warmed up with Qigong as the uh, way to get before we start doing the yoga. And we did a practice in which we built up chi in front of the body. I don't know if you see uh, me in the image or I can stop sharing and I'll just show you what I was doing. And that might be worthwhile. Do you see me in, in, the, in the picture or should I just stop sharing for just a moment? I can, we can see you, you're in a thumbnail. Okay, thumbnail. And if you can't see me, I'll, I'll stand up in the thumbnail and in uh, Qigong and building up Qi, uh, and you're building up the Qi in the central column, which is central area. And you move your palms or hands in this way. The right hand goes clockwise, the left hand goes counterclockwise. And that builds up Qi. And it builds up fairly nicely. Then what happens is that once you've built up Qi, you can start feeling the chi. You put your one hand uh, chest level and the other hand uh, navel level, and you let the energy build between the hands. You've now built up enough chi. And right now, I, it's just that little bit of movement I did, I feel the chi between my hands. And if I just move my hands up and down either hand, uh, the chi will keep building and I'll feel a weight. And that weight becomes pretty hefty if you just let it build. Uh, so that is the chi that is there. And, uh, I, and I was astonished. Okay, I'm feeling something. There's tingling in my fingers. There's weight in my hands in that chi. So that was my first exposure to that. And <clears throat> sit back down here. So you do feel it, you do uh, sense it. And uh, <clears throat> then you send the, the chi out to, into the universe as a prayer. Uh, and then you send the chi out with one hand, one hand to the back, one hand forward, and the chi goes out into the universe or into the planet in both directions. And that was the way that we were doing it. And we practiced that every time we got together for, for yoga class. I then wondered, can you see this chi? Uh, I mean, I certainly feel it. It's, I don't see anything when I'm doing this. So what I did was I just went to a blank wall and put my hands in front of my face 
because I feel the energies. Be if I put my hands in this way, I feel the energies between the hands. There's chi between the hands when you do that. That's the reason that in Tai Chi, you play with the ball, the chi ball. And if I do this and move my hands around, I build up chi in between the hands. So there's chi in between the hands. I don't see anything, but if I go to a blank wall and move my hands up and down and look through the, the space between my hands, I see something sort of cloudy and I see the rays that are there. And there, there's energy rays that are there by just doing that and just looking at it, you don't see it in a busy background, you don't see it. But in a plain wall and looking through the hands, you do see that energy between the hands. And that is chi. I feel that as I'm, as I'm doing that. So that was a very interesting observation. Then I decided, can I, I'm sending out prayers. So what happens when I send out prayers? Um, and the yoga teacher says, it's like, like a beam of light going, being sent out. So in bed, get used to the dark, open my eyes, put out my hands, either hand, and lo and behold, you see a beam moving out. Normally you don't see this because you're not looking for it. Your eyes are closed when you go to sleep. So you're not looking for any of this type of stuff. If now you're looking for it, some people will be able to see the beam. And if you point your finger, either finger, you'll see a beam going out from the finger also. And that is the chi that is there that no, people normally don't pay any attention to but it's there. Then I said, well, what about a person? Can you see chi in a person? And I started looking at people uh, in the gym, elsewhere, uh, theaters. When I go to the theater and the, everything is a little bit on the dark side. And then I notice there's rays coming out of people's heads. You won't see it normally because you're not paying attention to it. But there are rays coming out of everybody. It's like you're looking at a picture of a saint and everyone, and they have these rays coming out. The thing is, everyone has that. So you have all these rays coming out uh, and you're sending energy. And if you put your hand over a piece of quartz, uh, it could be other types of stones, but quartz is very good for this. You'll feel that same energy of uh, that you're feeling the same tinglingness that you see when you're building up chi. So all these things are related. And that's how I got into the whole area of consciousness and uh, studying all these areas because what am I doing? What am I feeling? And that led me into this, the whole field of uh, esoteric, esoteric things and metaphysical things and consciousness. That was the beginning of that uh, whole realm. <clears throat> then Claude Swanson came and gave a talk in 2011, um, and uh, he talked about life force and the scientific basis of life force. And his book is marvelous if you've never read it. It's, it's a very thick book, but has lots of information in it. And I read it from cover to cover. And uh, a lot of my information I got was from reading that book. But he introduced us to, uh, in the book to Master Li. And Master Li uh, came to the Bay Area and uh, he was gonna teach Qi. I said, okay, I gotta learn a little bit about this. <clears throat> How do you build up Qi and what do you do? <clears throat> well, went to his class and he just had us walk around uh, a grassy area in the sunlight. And what he's doing was just accumulating the chi that's in the surrounding atmosphere. And that's how he was building chi, which is very, very interesting. But he did interesting things. Um, he was able to build his own chi to a level and uh, Claude Swanson uh, documented what he was doing that uh, you know, 2000 miles away, he could stop uh, uh, cells, cancer cells from growing in a culture dish at a university lab. So everything is connected. 
that's there's more to all this and i've learned a lot more since that point in time but again that was another introduction to the world of of uh, chi <clears throat> then in september uh signed up for a course in building uh an internal chi ball because uh, i heard a person talk about building the internal chi ball in the, the Dantian area. And I'd read, read other books of people in martial arts and things of using that. And, and uh, I thought, oh, it'd be interesting to learn more about Qi. <laughs> and at that point, I learned more that Qi uh, helps maintain life and it's high at birth and reaches zero when you die. So yeah, it'd be good to have an extra battery pack in the body. <clears throat> So I spent a hundred days doing that. And it was a lot of work building a chi ball. And eventually I built a chi ball that was six to seven inches in diameter. It can be hard or soft and uh, you can move it around different parts of the body. Uh, so it was a very interesting exercise. Um, if you ask me for the name of the teacher or the school, uh, I promise not to mention it because uh, all, everything I'm doing is so new. And here they're talking about things that have existed for thousands of years. And I'm talking about measuring things and uh, planes of nature and, and doing things that are uh, probably weird to the people in this area. Uh, but uh, it's not weird to me. And so uh, I think for most of this audience, it's interesting information. And you can always Google things and find out about schools that teach all this. So just because I'm not telling you anything uh, doesn't mean that you, you can't learn it. And I've already told you how to build chi and then Tai Chi, the building chi. And I, I'll teach you how to, from that building of chi in the chest area, how you can measure that chi. Yeah, so uh, the stuff I'm teaching is real. And, and so therefore I'll, I'll teach it. <clears throat> Well, chi is called the life force. And I always found that concept interesting because I always thought of fish and fish swimming in water. They don't know they're swimming in water. They're just swimming around and existing and their gills are moving. So they're building, bringing in their own oxygen if that's the reason that they're alive or they're building, bringing in chi. Uh, and the way that we're all taught is that oxygen is essential for life and the brain goes dead very quickly without it and there's toxic effects of having too much CO2 and that's a standard belief. But then I said, well, there are these yogi guys and uh, Buddhist uh, monks, uh, people in Tibet, and they're known to not breathe for an hour or longer and be completely immersed in water and doesn't bother them not to be breathing. What is that? And then I thought some more about this whole subject matter. And it turns out that in my thinking, uh, cells, cell cultures remain alive for a long time when it's taken out of the body. It's not breathing, breathing, but I'm sure you can put it in an uh, absence of oxygen for a little bit and the cells will still be alive. So there's more to this whole story of what is life and what is what keeps us alive. And I believe that the teachers of Qigong and others are correct. There's a life force energy. And it could be as simple as uh, the life force might be the zero point energy field. It might be the ether. I don't know, uh, but I know how to now measure the fields that will hold this chi and that those things I can describe. But I'm skeptical of just no oxygen and wrong levels of ratios of oxygen and CO2 as being the only answer uh, of, of uh, dying from suffocation. <clears throat> okay, what are things that I know how to do and all the work that I've done in biogeometry and radiesthesia. Well, I know how to measure harmony energies. I know something called BG3, and I'll talk about this more in, in a little while. So I'll, I won't go into detail on it right now, but, uh, but I know how to measure that. <clears throat> you know, I have a special pendulum 
that will pick up the harmony energy of BG3. And then there's another energy that I discovered and I talk about in my book, The Secret and the Teacher of Light, and that's the 369 energy. And I call that the energy of creation. It's the energy of the vortex or the torus and other things will have that. And I create a special pendulum that will pick up that energy. And I'll show you all that in a few moments. <clears throat> And since I was building my chi ball, I found that my chi ball, the level of BG3 and 369 increased uh, every day as I built up the, the, uh, uh, the chi ball. So I found that very interesting and I started measuring all of that. Uh, but first thing you're gonna wonder if you don't know BG3 and 369 is what the heck is Jerry talking about? <clears throat> so I'll get into that a bit. <clears throat> and I'll talk about the concept of resonance because the concept of resonance is really key to measuring energies. <clears throat> and everyone knows that if you strike a tuning fork, um, whatever the note is of that tuning fork, all other tuning forks of different octaves will also vibrate. That's due to resonance. The energy carries and it resonates through the medium and other uh, tuning forks will vibrate. The same thing happens with a uh, string instrument. And the string instrument is called a monochord and the monochord has uh, strings that are connected. Uh, there are two fixed points. The little two triangular, triangular areas are the two fixed points. And the length of the string between those two fixed points gives a note, you pluck that note, you pluck that string, and all strings of different octaves will also vibrate through resonance. It picks up the vibration, and because it's a different octave, or it's in harmony with it, it will vibrate. <clears throat> and that really is a basis for all measurements in the field of radiesthesia because you can now pick up energies or vibrational energies through resonance. So the monochord, the note is W, the length of the string between two fixed points. And in radiesthesia, what you have is a pendulum and you also have two fixed points. You have your finger, which is a black dot there, and you have the weight. And the length of the string is the W, and that is the note. And how do you come into resonance with an, the subtle energy? Well, you make the string length proportional in terms of octaves to that W of the monochord. And when the string length is the same, the pendulum goes clockwise. And I'll tell you why on that also. But that Concept is the sole basis of how you pick up energies and you can pick up any energies and you have that ability. You may not realize that because you've never looked for it, but you do have that ability and you do pick it up. And it's fairly straightforward to pick it up. And it's done in, through the field of radius seizure. <clears throat> And at the right string length, if you're looking at uh, an energy and uh, the right string length, the pendulum goes clockwise. And if it's not in a resonance, it goes counterclockwise, or if it's not picking up anything, it just remains neutral. And it's not a, the concept of thinking about mentally, thinking about, oh, I gotta pick up uh, this energy and I'll move my pendulum clockwise. No, it's not that at all your subconscious picks up that energy and it doesn't have a way to translate that to the conscious mind. But the subconscious through your finger and through the energies moving in your body can translate into a movement of clockwise rotation when it detects that energy. And so you're not thinking, but your body picks that up. And normally what you do is you get initiate a to and fro movement of the pendulum. And then uh, when 
if you're looking at a particular energy, and when the energy, when the string length is the right length, it'll go clockwise. And this this is an accurate way of looking at energy and picking up energy. And as the radius field is practiced by thousands of folks, and there are thousands of folks in the biogeometry area. So it's not something that oh, one person can do and no one else can do. It's just a matter of practice and wanting to do it. <clears throat> so what do you do? You have a pendulum. <clears throat> if you want to pick up the wavelength of yourself, which is a very useful thing to do, you just have the pendulum and then you release, you move your fingers up the string. Uh, and then you start a to and fro movement. Uh, once you start that uh, uh, movement uh, up the string and at a particular string length, the pendulum goes clockwise. And you, now you're picking up the wavelength that represents you, your personal wavelength. And you don't have to pick up you, you can pick up wavelength of anything. Everything has subtle energies. You can pick up the subtle energies of everything. And anything you look at, you can pick up the subtle energies of. You just don't think along those lines because you're not used to thinking along those lines, but you do. Color red. Uh, okay, my mindset is wavelength of color red. I drop my, I move my finger up the string, uh, and at a certain point, the pendulum goes clockwise, and I'm picking up the resonance of the color red. It's that simple. You know, is that it's a simple thing to do once you've got the concept into your mind to 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 do that. Hmm. Now I'll jump into the concept of BG3, which is a, is a specific energy that is there, and it's the energy of harmony. <clears throat> in biogeometry three, it, it, you know, this particular energy just happens to have uh, three uh, colors associated with it. And, and just like you pick up the color red, you can pick up the color a color called negative green, and, and you pick up a color called ultraviolet, in a color called gold, which is more of the orange color. Uh, and I won't go into why you can do these or the whatnots of that, but those colors are not what it is BG3. BG3 really is the quality of harmony. So the quality of harmony causes the pendulum uh, to go clockwise. <clears throat> so if, and let me define what call quality of harmony uh, is. <clears throat> Harmony and centering and balance are some of the key words uh, that are used in the BG3 uh, definitions. The center of a circle, as long as you don't put a dot in the center of the circle, the center of the circle is a perfect balance point. And so that has BG3 energies. It doesn't have it anywhere else in the circle, but at the very center, it has it. You draw an angle. Where is the point that is most balanced? It's in the center at the 45 degree. If you draw a 45 degree, you've now taken away the position of the balance. Now it's gonna be between the 45 and the 90 degree angle. But at that particular position between 90, uh, 90 degrees at 45 degree, you'll find balance. And in a room, if you can move objects around, there are certain ways to move it around and you can test the room for BG3. And uh, you'll find that objects, if they're centered optimally, will create BG3. And there are all sorts of biogeometry tools that will create BG3. I won't go into that because that's a whole different subject matter. I just want you to understand that there's something called BG3 that's a harmony energy. <clears throat> and you can pick it up with uh, particular pendulums and, and FNBR does sell these. Uh, BG16 or ICUP pendulum, it'll pick up this uh, energy quality. So there are pendulums that will pick up this uh, energy. <clears throat> Let's talk about the energy of creation, 369, because that is another energy that we find when you look at Qi. It's there, and I'll show you why it's there too in a few minutes. And it's very interesting why it's there. <clears throat> Well, Tesla said that if you only knew that magnificence of 369, then you would have the key to the universe. And that got me to thinking and exploring why that is so. 
And when I saw a picture of the uh, torus structure, and there's a torus in the upper right-hand corner of the, the slide, and the two little circles inside the bigger circle are the torus itself and, and the energy surrounding it. But you see, if you draw that in this way, you see a six there and you see a nine there. The blue portion, you see the nine, and the six you see uh, in the red portion. In the infinity symbol, you can see a three there also. But, you know, if you just had the two circles and the big circle, there's no 369 energies. Your pendulum is, gonna, is not going to pick up anything. And what I was picking up with the symbol was this torus structure was the BG3 energies. So it has the BG3 energies and the 369 energies. But if I now trace six in a clockwise manner and the nine in a clockwise manner, suddenly you have BG3 energies and 369 energies. And you don't even have to trace it. All I have to do on, a, on that circle is just put an arrow showing you the direction of flow of energies. And the energy will be there. And you can photocopy that. Because remember, you are a creator. And once you've created this, it can be photocopied forever. And it'll have that energy there. So that was very interesting. And clockwise rotation is creation energy. Uh, counterclockwise is entropy, decay. And also, nature sees units. They don't necessarily three, see 369. Just happens that 369 has a, a structure that has rotation in it. But the universe sees units. So if you write three units, six units, nine units on a piece of paper or anything else, it'll have the 369 energies associated with it. And <clears throat> why is it creation energy? If you read the Walter Russell materials, Clockwise rotation of light into a center. And there's two, uh, two clockwise rotations of light from the top and the bottom. And one call it male, one for as female. That is the basis of creation of matter. And then the decay of matter it comes into the center. And there's matter in equilibrium, or, but it still decays. So the matter decays in a counterclockwise rotation out from the center. And so the gra it's gravitational into the center. So there's force going into the center, rotation into the center, and there's rotation out, which is magnetic. So the concept of magnetic or vortex out and context con and the description of a vortex in or gravitational is a key concept. You're talking about something that people don't normally talk about, but it is in fact the nature of the nature of how creation occurs. And that's the reason 369 becomes important. Hmm. Now matter, you think of matter being the atoms and uh, the molecules and, uh, but if you break down matter into its fundamental portions, uh, and these are called GANs, gas in the nanostate, or ORMUS, and I'll show you structures of this in a second, or monatomic matter and magnets. You see that all these structures have a magnetic and gravitational structure associated with it. And that becomes important when we talk about chi and how you measure chi. I can just show you how to do it and not talk about this, but you won't understand it. You may not necessarily believe what I'm talking about. So I, I think it's good to give you all this information, uh, just, just a bird's eye view of this information, because there's a you can go into depth on this. Uh, gas in the nanostate, normally we talk about matter as solids, liquids, and gases. But then um, the work of Keshe and others have shown that there's other forms of matter. We call it nano or GANs, gas in the nanostate, and then plasma. And so that's what I'll sort of give you a brief, brief description on. I'm not going to go into depth in, on, on any of this. And, uh, uh, but I'll give you an example so that 
it, it sort of focus your mind into what I'm talking about. If you have a copper wire and on the bottom of the screen is that all the blue dots hooked together, imagine that is a, a copper wire. <clears throat> you put a ben Benson burner or a propane torch to that, you know, form a black layer on top of that uh, copper wire. It's not different oxidation states of, of copper. What you've done is you've created what's called a nano coating or the nano later. And these are carbon, uh, these are the copper atoms that are slightly separated out from each other. Um, and I'll tell you why they're slightly separated out from each other in a second. And there are spaces between them and they do have bits of, of, uh, of superconductivity uh, aspects to it. And if you put in some water, acids, and alkali, you can free that matter and free it into the water phase. And that's what you call the gas in the nanostate. But all these materials are materials in that are balanced and spread out. Uh, so what does that all mean? <clears throat> well, if you have a magnet, and that's what this left question of the slide is talking about, you have disk magnets. <clears throat> And if you have a bunch of them together, you can sort of, you know, they're all facing north, they're all facing south. You can move them around, and because of their attraction repulsion, they'll get into a balanced state of, of where they belong. And you can't push it too close together because the next magnet will be pushed out. So you get a balanced state. And that's due to the gravitational magnetic nature of magnets. In fact, magnets are not just north-south. Magnets really are, because they're atoms, they're really gravitational vortexes in and vortexes out. They just happen to be oriented so that you see it as magnets of north and south. There's really gravitational in and gravitational out. And that's what GANS is. That's what nano is. That's what basic matter is. It is energy going in, gravitational, energy going out, magnetic, and that's an important concept. And all this is described by Keshe and all the work on his foundation. Hmm. Okay, so much for that, but how do you pick it up? Well, all I have to do is draw uh, three, six, nine lines in that order. You can't draw nine and then six and three somewhere else. It has to be a certain order. If you do that on a pendulum, you have a 369 pendulum. 369 pendulum also pick up BG3. It's not picking up BG3 per se, but most times when you see 369, you also see th BG3. But you can pick, pick that up and you can have this pendulum there and it'll pick up that, that energy. <clears throat> and I call it 369 from, because of Tesla. <clears throat> so how do you measure all this stuff? And so I, I want to describe that to you a little bit because, again, you're going to say, well, that's fine and dandy, but how do you measure it? <clears throat> well, it turns out that every 90 degree angle, and graph papers have a lot of 90 degree angles on it, they're blockages to subtle energies. And that's the reason if people, if you know people who do healing and working with pendulums and to have witnesses of a person, They'll wrap the, the person's name uh, or his cells that they wiped the forehead with cells. They'll, they'll wrap that paper into uh, uh, graph paper and that protects it. Uh, and so nothing else can get into that uh, energy. So what you do is if every 90 degree is a blockage and the circle is, is where you put your object you want to measure, if you're measuring yourself or you just want to put your finger into that circle, uh, then you're measuring yourself or the object and you have your 369 pendulum and it'll go clockwise on the object and it'll go clockwise after every 90 degree until it's reached the limit of, ah, uh, there's no more, the energy can't penetrate beyond that point. So it stops and therefore point before it stops, where it's still going clockwise, is the relative level of BG3 that uh, is there. And that's how, it's just that simple of how you measure BG3. So 
what do you do when you're you want to measure your own chi? Very simple. Uh, you measure your baseline. You just put your finger in the circle, have your three six nine pendulum, and go across the ruler. And at the point where the pendulum stops turning, uh, going clockwise, that is the level of your BG three for you. It's that simple. Okay, now let's build up a little bit of energy. Do that little exercise of building up that energy of chi. You know, I just do that, my finger tingles. Now, if I put my finger on that circle and use the other, use that, use my left hand on the circle, use the right hand with the pendulum on that chart and just go across and it'll go across until you reach a new level. Or if you built up enough energy, it'll, you'll bypass the whole chart. But you know now that you've built up a lot of chi and it goes beyond that chart. But now you know you've done something. <clears throat> you know that you've measured something that wasn't there before. So you've now done your first measurement of chi. And it's there. It's that simple to prove it to yourself. The trouble with building the chi ball was I was building the chi ball and I re soon reached well over a million units. Hmm. And even getting to the million units, I was able to measure it because I have these charts. I made the lines much closer together and I <clears throat> scotch taped a whole bunch of these uh, charts together until you know, each chart was 150,000 uh, and I, did enough species of paper, so I got up to a million. So I have a chart that can go up to a million. And then you can measure up to a million. You can put whatever you want on the, in the circle, yourself, your finger, or you know, wipe some inner cells on a piece of paper and put, put it in there. And you'll be able to measure up to a million. So you can at least measure up to that level and you get pretty good results uh, using this, this technique. <clears throat> My problem was that after a while, I got well above a million and I pretty soon got into the billions. Um, and then I could no longer do that. And I couldn't do it more than 100 million using this procedure. So I had to devise another way of, of measuring. And I was now very sensitive to measuring energies. And I found that you can build, uh, up, you can build, you can feel the energies you don't have to have a chart if you can now feel the energies because it's resonance. You're coming into resonance with an energy. And if you can train yourself to feel energy, you can say the energy is greater than 3,000, greater than 100,000, greater than 200,000. And the pendulum will go clockwise. And there you just use a neutral pendulum. You're no longer, or you can use a BG3 pendulum or 369 pendulum. It doesn't matter. You are now being you're sensitive to the energies and you can measure that. And you can learn how to do that by, here are a bunch of ohm figures in a three, six, nine configuration. Put four, put one, one of these together and you can feel the energy of 3,900 uh, BG3 or three, six, nine units. Put four of them together, you have 165,000. Put the structure of under a, a globe, because spheres magnify these energies. The energy then jumps up to 275. Put four of these under a globe and suddenly you have 1 million, uh, actually it's about 950,000 units of, of BG3. And you can now feel this energy in the pendulum uh, rotation. It's a little, you have, you have to get used to feeling energy to, to do this. So I said, there may be other ways to do that. And so I took a look at the standard uh, uh, light charts and bovis charts and found that they really work also. This is just a globe. And you put four of these underneath uh, of these ohm structures under uh, matrix ohm structures. Uh, and SSA, it's just term, my, term, my terminology, spiritual ohm array. <clears throat> but you put all this in, in under and you learn to feel energy. Um, but I just talked about this, uh, using, uh, learning how to look at numbers, but 
<clears throat> there are charts out there. Uh, Althea Gray has a nice chart, a light chart, light measurement chart. And if you look her up on, on the web, she has a chart that uh, on the outer circle can go up to 20 million. Inner chart uh, will be smaller numbers. And it's, it's a way that uh, dowsers use to look at the at people and things of where uh, things are, where people are. Uh, if you live the world of anger and hate and things, you may be in this negative realm. As you move up, you're more into the spiritual realm. So they use this uh, for various purposes. So that's a nice chart. And in fact, when you look at the chart and you, you're calibrated to the chart, the numbers you reach and the numbers you get are no different than the numbers you get uh, using the BG3 charts because you're calibrated to that. <clears throat> Boas chart, life chart is very similar, except now it goes up to 100 trillion. And you and if you're building up and looking at the at some of the planes of nature on, on the cheese and the ball of cheese, you do reach these levels. It's amazing. So you do have high levels that you can measure, but it's another way of doing it. And the way you use this chart is you have your neutral pendulum, you get it going a to and fro motion in the center, and the pendulum will just point and to the direction, to the line that of that energy that uh, of what you're measuring. So in your mind, you have the mind of what it is. If it's, you're measuring yourself, uh, then then you just put the pendulum there and you're measuring yourself, and the and the pendulum will point to uh, the energy uh, that uh, you're looking at. And it works. It's strange, but it works. And you're looking, I still believe this is radiesthesia versus mental dowsing, because <clears throat> you're looking at energy and look, you're looking at resonance uh, with energy. <clears throat> okay, now let's look at magnetic fields because this really is the basis of why you're measuring things uh, with chi and how you're doing that. <clears throat> On the left-hand side of the slide, you'll see all the little disc magnets that are there, and they'll position themselves in a certain way on a table. So that's one way to look at uh, fields and the fields of individual magnets. But if you take four magnets and put it into a, a rectangular or square shape, energy inside that will now get configured and the energy inside that square, you'll find both BG3 energies and 369 energies. Why is that? What's happening is that empty air is not empty air, or empty space is not really empty space. There are all sorts of things in there that it will have gravitational magnetic elements within it. There's rotation in, rotation out. Mag gravitational, magnetic. Because you have the magnets there, everything in that space is now configured so that all those individual magnetic gravitational elements are oriented in a balanced way. And that's the reason you're picking up the 369. Because you're picking up all these individual uh, elements. Okay? If it's all centered and you're picking up all these 369 elements or GANs or nano or plasma, it doesn't matter what you call it. They're there. And in between those areas, everything is in balance. And what does that mean? When there's balance, there's BG3. So you're picking up BG3 and it's there. So if you just go with the pendulum and into that uh, square, you'll find BG3 and 369. If you have some disc magnets at home, do that. If you've made Ormus at home, and it doesn't have to be magnets. Ormus or GANs, if you have, happen to have any, and it's easy to make, and I talk about how to make it in my uh, Science, uh, Subtle Energies uh, and Spirituality book, 
you can make it with salt, with uh, just sea salt water. But you'll form these fields. And in, within these fields are these energies. And these energies can be used for many things. I put, I copy these energies and I put water on top of it to optimize the structuring of water uh, just for drinking purposes. But that is the basis of finding fields and being able to measure fields. Okay, how do I know that's true with regard to chi? Well, let's look at something else then. Well, I just, I'll, I talked about most of this. I may all repeat this very, very quickly. Uh, matter has magnetic gravitational elements in it. It's a vortex in, vortex out. And uh, these can be called monatomic elements. And if you have a balanced system, you're going to pick up BG3, you're going to pick up the 369, because these are the elements that are, have uh, uh, the gravitational 369 core structures that are there. So, oh, and this one we went through already. Okay. Here is a piece of paper. This is real data. It's not made up data. <clears throat> It has four magnets there at the four corners of the piece of paper. I take my BG3 pendulum and I go through the paper. I put a, a pink mark wherever I find BG3. I take my 369 pendulum and anytime the pendulum goes clockwise, it's a 369 energy. I put a blue dot there. So I did this, and so I have picked up the field of 369 and BG3. Before, when I was looking at all this, I said, oh, there's BG3 and 369. I lumped everything together in my mind. But it's not all together. They're separate entities, separate things. When you put a pendulum on top of it from a distance, you're picking up everything. So from a distance, it looks like, oh, everything has 369 and, and BG3. But if, now, if you come into the paper, they'll have the individual 369s and, B, and, B, and, uh, th and BG3. And if I put an Ormus uh, vial on every corner, it'll be the same thing. It's also interesting to note that BG3 is a yang energy and 369 is a yin energy. And I didn't know that until my friends in Radius C just says, told me that because I wasn't looking for that in the, in the very beginning. But it is, and when you look for yin, yin and yang, it, it is of that nature. And the two energies do not overlap. There are other things called still centers, but that's another story. Uh, and vortexes form it, etc. But there's there's more to all this than one can imagine. <clears throat> okay, looking at the Dantian area, the area beneath the uh, Navel, just do a circle, rough circle, uh, in terms of looking at that. <clears throat> and I took a picture of that uh, because it's easier to take a picture of that and work with the picture than working uh, with the looking at myself and finding out where it is, where is the 369 and where is the BG3. But a picture represents you anyways, because that's the nature of reality. Uh, and uh, Pictures are there and they're real things, just like photocopy something and it's there. You photocopy this, you'll find these energies are in there also, by the way. So you find the 369 energies there and you find the BG3 energies are, that are there. And if you have more energy and build more, the density of all this and the 3D area that you're looking at will become more dense and you'll get the higher levels of BG3 and 369. So in the cultivated um, chi ball, you'll have that and you can pick up that energy. And to me, this is good proof of the concept of how you measure chi and what is being formed and this field that is formed. Because the field is only within this area, it's not elsewhere. And I show that in the next slide. <clears throat> I look at the area above my chi ball and what do I find? Before, when I was writing my book, I found 369 is in the center, central column. 
and BG3 surrounding it. And I find this in this picture. I'll digress a bit because this picture is sort of interesting just for another uh, point of view that I'll talk about in another presentation in the sense that two weeks after I took this picture, this picture changed because we are changing and everything about us is changing. And what I found in a couple of weeks time was that everything in this area except the chi ball now has all colors and the 369 and BG3 went away. But this is happening throughout your body and your biofield. And so that's another subject matter, but that's just a teaser <laughs> in terms of, of the future of uh, what I'll be talking about. Because this is, a, this is a big thing. And this is what I call birth of a new humanity. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Let's now talk about, some, about our natural chi versus the cultivated chi. <clears throat> If you don't know anything about it, you'll say, oh, I'm building up chi and I'm adding it to my uh, natural chi. So if I build up to a billion, I'll live forever. <clears throat> well, that might not be the case. <clears throat> what we found was that as I was looking at all this, both Meg and I were looking at all this, um, and she's not building up any cultivator chi or anything. She doesn't know how to do that. And uh, so she was looking at me and I, and she was looking at herself and she found an area, a Dantian area that's different from where the ball is that the chi is located. And that had a particular value to it. Mine did too, it had a particular value to it. It was not in the billions. So, okay, what, what does that mean? In my mind, it meant that it's probably the natural chi that I'm looking at that's going down with age. And the ball is an extra battery pack that I can use and move and do things to keep me healthy. And it's a good thing to have. And you can do that. But even the practice of qigong or tai chi will build chi within you anyways, whether it's in your dantian or not. So the natural chi is there. And I believe that that is different from the cultivated chi. And I'm not sure my qigong teacher would say yes or no to this. And that's the reason I'm not mentioning her name or anything else, because these are all conjectures on, on my part based upon data that I am looking at. And it seems to make sense to me. And I've made some other observations that I'll now tell you about. <clears throat> Okay, I then decided to look at uh, people and uh, arbitrarily of different ages and uh, from birth to old age. And I'm looking at it on the physical plane. And that's an important point to make also, but I'll, you'll understand why I make that point. But on the physical plane, I'm looking at it. And I find that people when they're born have a huge amount of chi. Uh, here, I'm putting 150 million. Hmm. And by age one, that's dropped considerably. And here I put it at 100 million. By 10, it's 900,000. And by age 80, it's around 90,000. And it varies from person to person. Some people age 70, it might down, be down to 10. Uh, it, it varies. So, uh, and it varies, in, and I'm finding that the new, newer generation have higher levels of uh, numbers than the older generation. But it's very interesting. And the standard belief is that chi changes with during your lifetime. And as you get, and when it reaches zero, you're in, at the end stage. Uh, so, uh, yeah, is it, can, you, can you raise that? Uh, well, you might. And I'll talk a little bit about that and some of my conjectures in this area. <clears throat> Before doing that, let me talk about the planes of nature and why I'm looking at the various planes. <clears throat> in biogeometry and in almost any esoteric areas, 
uh, we have the planes, and sometimes we don't call it planes of nature. We may just call it, uh, this is the physical plane, or this is the physical area, and then there's the vital area, or, or the astral and the emotional areas, and the mental areas, and the spiritual areas. Uh, in biogeometry, break it down into planes, and, uh, and we have rulers in, in biogeometry that looks at... Uh, these various areas. And in fact, the, the, the good thing about using uh, these rulers is that you can look at the different planes. Uh, something may be going wrong in the mental area or in the emotional area. And if you look at the ruler, you can find which area is causing the problem and be able to focus on remedies for those particular areas. So it has its uh, very interesting use. Uh, with with regard to, and they call this the human archetype ruler. Again, nothing to do with what we're doing, so I'm not going into that, but uh, it's just another piece of information because the planes are there and there's the electric plane and we've seen the electric and the magnetic. And anytime you see anything electromagnetic, you see the electric and the magnetic uh, portions of it. In between that are the compression waves that are non-electromagnetic and therefore, uh, the scientific world says, oh, there's nothing there because they can't measure it. And that's the same thing. They'll say that bowel geometry or anything else is not real because you can't measure it. And they don't realize that uh, you can measure it, but you have to use another part of your brain to, to do so. That's what uh, the planes are. And you look at the individual areas within the planes, and you look at levels in the emotional and the mental and the spiritual. So there are many, many levels uh, that are there, and you can isolate levels where there are problems. And that's sometimes useful in, in when working on healing a person. <clears throat> well, what does that have to do with chi? When we looked at chi, we found that, yes, there are these various levels. And there's these various levels because we are in all these levels. We are thinking that, oh, we're just in this physical level and we don't have access to all these other levels. Yes, you do. Uh, it's just if you're open to it, you have access to all these levels. So what you're doing is now you're looking at the physical level and find out and get some numbers of what's in this, I'm really at a typical adult. Uh, and you find levels for the typical adult and the physical level. This may be an adult, age 40, whatever. And then you look and you say, you ask the question, looking for the energies in the emotional level. And these all can be done with the rulers uh, because there's this is still within the realm of rulers. So you don't have to go to the bobus chart or, or go to every uh, area of, of detecting energy levels beyond the millions. Beyond that, uh, you might have to get uh, creative and, and go into these other charts uh, and measure it. But the mental, as you go up the ladder in these areas, the vibrational rates go up and they go up significantly. So the emotional level is significantly higher than the physical. The mental level is significantly higher uh, than the emotional. You're looking at the millions. <clears throat> the spiritual level goes much, much higher. And I was looking at myself in spiritual level five, which is not on the chart. And that was in the trillions. And <clears throat> a person not looking at that will say, oh, that's not a real thing. Maybe that's the case. I don't know. I was able to measure things uh, doing that. So I was looking at numbers in, in those areas. <clears throat> And the cultivated chi ball were in levels much, much higher than any of these levels, at least 10 times higher than, than these levels. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> if we want to increase our vitality during lifetime or increase our longevity or increase the quality of life by having more chi in ourselves, is there a way to, to do that? Well, don't know, don't have the full answer to that, but I do know some principles. I know the principle of copying, copying subtle energies. 
and permanently placing that energy into another location. It's a fundamental principle that I teach, uh, especially in that second book of, of mine, uh, Science, Subtle Energies and Spirituality. <clears throat> and I do know where the highest level of energy is located, and that's who we are. Our I am essence is our highest level. And if you know how to, if you look at your own energy level, and I don't know if you can see me here, but you can look at your normal level and all I have to say is I'm rethinking, rethink I am, and the pendulum will start rethink going much, much faster. It'll become like a helicopter because I've increased my level of energy, my I am energy. And it's as simple as making that simple statement, even though you may not know the meaning of that statement, that statement will spiral you into who you are, because um, rethinking, rethink I am does that. So uh, a simple affirmation can increase your level of vibrational energy. And then all you have to do is make the statement, I am copying my I am energy, and I'm permanently placing it in my natural chi ball. And when I did that, it gave my body a jolt. <laughs> I, uh, I felt <laughs> the energy was there, and I measured it afterwards, and it, it increased. I'm not saying that everyone it'll happen to everybody. I'm not saying that this is the way to do it. I'm not saying that this will do anything for you, because uh, all this is new. This is experiments, and this is uh, who we are. And I'm an experimenter, and I play with these energies, and I think that's interesting. So let me go through the example. Okay, here I'm talking about moving energies. Here I've moved energies of the uh, ohm structure energies, which is in the 17,000. I moved a piece of wood, tile, CD, paper, and the energy was there. I, since I permanently copied it, it remained there permanently. And I put, can put water on it, and test water, and it's there. <clears throat> And you, know, you do that with uh, virtually anything. You know, I could do it with these ohms. I could do it with anything else. And you put energy into anything. And um, here's an example. I put some energy. My wife was having arthritis problems in her uh, wrist. And I copied my energy permanently onto a wrist band, tennis wrist band, and uh, had her wear that overnight. Next day, her arthritis went away. I'm not saying this is going to happen to everybody. Uh, because it may not. I'm just saying that here's an antidote. That's all it is. It's just an antidote. And uh, <clears throat> I, I, well, you can, uh, this says the same thing. You can uh, check energies that you move from one place to another, and it'll be at the other location. So that's an easy thing to, to, to do. You can put uh, anything that gives BG3 uh, or 369, you take an ohm symbol, move that energy from one place to another as a movement. And it'll, energy will move. And yet, if you didn't copy it, um, you won't find the energy in the original spot, but only in the copy spot. But if you copy it and then permanently uh, move it to another spot, you'll find it that other spot and the energy will remain in the original spot. So I don't want to just copy something because it'll move things around. So I copy and then I move it. So that's the, an, an important concept. Um, okay, talked about that. <clears throat> Oops, pushing the wrong thumb. Sorry about that. Okay, and I did uh, some anecdotal things of, of copying energies uh, uh, on of, of uh, onto pieces of paper. People just stating affirmations, and paper increased uh, uh, the energy, and so that proved myself. Yes. Copying energies to areas do work. Hmm. So in terms of doing energy, I can copy. What you do is uh, you can state an affirmation. On this slide, I'm, I'm, I'm stating the affirmation that I just gave you. I'm rethinking, rethink I am. I can state it three times. And when be saying that, feel the energy yourself as 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 I'm stating it, I am rethinking, 
rethink I am. I'm rethinking, rethink I am. At that point, you then uh, put, make a statement, I am copying my I am energy and permanently placing the energy into my natural chi. And because you're doing that, it'll do it. And while I made the statement, you may have noticed that there is a greater stillness in the air around you. And you're entering in, into that higher vibrational rate, but you're also entering into that center of stillness. So that was one example. <clears throat> Let me give you another example. Uh, again, this is more what I'm doing. <clears throat> And I use a different affirmation. I've increased my chi. Uh, I was 90 before and it increased to 115. And then I use this other affirmation. <clears throat> and I like this affirmation because it, it resonates with me because everything is thoughts. And I am thoughts. In fact, we're thoughts within thoughts within thoughts. Every cell is a thought. Every organ is a thought. Uh, everything are thoughts, every atom. So if you say, I am thoughts within thoughts within thoughts, I am. And then you go deeper into the thoughts. I am thoughts within thoughts within thoughts, within thoughts within thoughts within thoughts. Six times. You're deeper into who you are. And then if you say it nine times, I am thoughts within thoughts within thoughts, within thoughts within thoughts within thoughts, within thoughts within thoughts within thoughts, I am and you state who you are with your full name, you're now deep into your I am essence. And then when you move, permanently copy and move that chi into your chi ball, you know, at the physical level, you're doing that, um, and it'll affect all the levels. Uh, you're just moving into your chi ball you find that your chi ball energy has in fact increased. And these are the levels that I found after I did that. And I did that a few days ago and I'm up to around 300. Uh, so I'm not saying that this works for everybody. I'm not saying anything. Uh, I'm just giving you an example of what I did. <laughs> so, uh, and I think uh, with that, I will call it uh, a day. Yeah, good, I'll stop sharing. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Um, so much data. And I'm and um I'm sure people have questions. So um, but I want to I wanted to ask you first. Um, um when you copy, you so you're doing the, you know, I I'm copying your energy and permanently placing it somewhere. When you say permanently, you mean like permanently, does it not dissipate over time? It doesn't dissipate, uh, but you know, if you wash the, the, the wristband, it'll go away. If your cells are changing everything else, I'm sure it's gonna go, it'll go away. But your chi is changing on an ongoing basis because you're changing. You, you may think you're solid and everything is this way, but everything changes. Uh, so permanently is just a way of stating something because if you just copy it and it's there, you may stay there 10 minutes, five minutes or whatever. And, and, and um, it, it's not going to be long lasting. Permanent really doesn't mean permanent uh, uh, because you're changing all the time anyways. Permanent is more permanent when you copy energy into a CD or into a piece of wood. And then you can test that wood for that energy on an ongoing basis. And if I put the wood out in the rain and weather and things it may, and sunlight, it may dissipate out over time. But the things I tested my uh, little ceramic uh, uh, thing that I have, and uh, the chi is there, and it's been probably about a year. It's still there. It hasn't changed. Uh, so I just put my cup on, on that uh, every day after I drink some water. I just put my cup there, and if I need some more water, I just pick it up, and the energies are high on it, and that's great. Okay, um, Irina wants to know how much of the reduction in chi as we age is due to EMF or the technologies around us. Um, she wants to know, have you tested chi of different aging, aged people with and without EMF impacts? Would uh, should be curious to know if our environment is causing the reduction in chi. Well, I could give a flippant answer. 
Um, and I, I'm tempted to do that because uh, I think when you're exposed to all this stuff, uh, uh, you are deteriorating <laughs> slowly. Uh, and therefore, uh, uh, it behooves everyone to have protective things around them uh, uh, that will, in essence, neutralize that uh, you know, the EMF. And there are ways to, to do that. Uh, and I think everyone should everyone should neutralize every cell phone, every Wi-Fi uh, router, um, every cellular phone, smart meter that they have, and, and you, even your uh, electrical panels, uh, just neutralize it. And there are ways to do that. And I'm happy to tell people about it whenever uh, I'm asked on a, on a specific basis. <laughs> you did that for, for my electrical panel in my house um, when I, I had a new electrical panel installed. And I, you did, you just put uh, 369 marks. Down well, that or the 16 lines is another quick, uh, nice way to, to do that. <clears throat> There's certain numbers that are BG3, um, and but you, you need uh, several types of them. Uh, the BG3 things have been researched quite well, so that's a good one to do. For electrical panels, it's uh, nine to hook up to link to electrical and 16 to hook up to BG3. BG3 is the 16 number. So those are two good numbers uh to use uh and i may have done it with uh the, th the nine and 16 i, I don't remember oh <clears throat> but those are two two good numbers that are, are there okay um someone else wants to know have you uh tried having other people dows to verify increases in bg3 and 369 energy without knowing that the energy has been copied so sort of a not a double blind <laughs> study but you know like a um have you had people confirm your your results? I've had various people do it. Uh, and people will get uh, sometimes different types of numbers and depends upon how you sir, are measuring and at what levels you're le looking at. It's easy to do uh, small numbers because small numbers are easy. Uh, you look at water and look at the typical water, which is 200 BG3 units. And you can bless that water and watch that go up to 10,000 and test that. And that's, that's a good thing to, to, to do. Qi is something that's a little bit different. And uh, I have not taught this and I have not uh, tried to teach this to anybody. And so uh, it's not widespread. And so everyone, and, uh, and I was looking at my Qi for the longest period of time at the spiritual level. So I was getting huge numbers and I didn't know I was measuring in the spiritual level. It, it took a number of people measuring, and finally, I was able to understand what was really happening. Uh, but it takes, I've been on a learning curve uh, for, the, for the past uh, at least five months or so. <laughs> All this is new stuff, by the way. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> this is, uh, and it's not going to be believed by, uh, by a lot of people, uh, because, you know, how can you do this? How can you measure these huge numbers? And not everyone's going to be able to measure the huge numbers. Uh, smaller numbers up to a million, people can build the stuff that I built and they can do that and they can watch what happens up to the million and they can see, therefore, that, yeah, this is real. And they do it on themselves. All they have to do is just move the energy around and watch what happens. It's an easy thing to, to do. Uh, there's no nothing special about that. And they can just watch the the chi go, go from a few thousand to multiple thousands. <clears throat> That's something that everyone can, can do. And unless one builds the levels very high, and the I am essence is something else. Uh, that's another level. And, uh, and if your belief in who you are is at one level, and you may make a statement, your level may be at that particular statement level. And if you make it at another level, it'll be another level. It used to be that I, I, I put my hands around water and bless the water and the water will go up to 10,000, 20,000. It's not nice going up from, from 200 to that is, is pretty darn good. And then one day I, I said, well, I am, I am. So I am blessing this water. And I use that emphasis of who I am. You know, water went up to a million. 
Hmm. So, so you're, invoking, it's, you're invoking that I am essence. Consciousness. Yeah, it's who you are. And even that I've discovered another thing, hmm. uh, who you are and looking at the levels of consciousness is based upon who, who you believe you are. Is our, our, our thoughts are our own limitations. We are, everything can change based upon our thoughts. It's where our thoughts are and what do we believe and what we believe are the limits of who we are. And your level of consciousness goes up if you believe in different levels. And sometimes you have to do different things to get to another higher level. When I first moved the color red from this spot to that spot across the room, and I no longer see it here and I see it there, then I had my friend, I moved this energy of this cube from this to their house uh, 30 miles away, and they go to their wall and find it there. Okay, I'm a creator. I can do this. And that increases your level of belief. And when you measure and start looking at these energies and you get into the trillions, it, that changes you. It changes who you believe you are. And if you're always going to say, I am just me, and this is the physical universe, and that is it. That is your belief system. And the beauty of I'm rethinking, rethink I am, is that you may not know the definition of rethink. By using the word rethink versus think, you spiral yourself into the truth. So if you say to yourself, I am a conservative, I believe in this, you've locked yourself into that thought, or I'm a liberal, whatever, it doesn't matter. That is who you are. And but if I'm rethinking the concepts that are there, you spiral yourself into more of the truth. And that's a big step for humanity, is the word rethink and to use the word rethink, because that will get you to another level. And by stating that and understanding it, people, when they do the I am affirmation, the first time they may not feel anything or they may feel a lot, <clears throat> but if you repeat this a number of times and pause between I'm um, rethinking, rethink I am, that moves you in to that center because you're no longer going straight. You're coming, spiraling into who you are. And that's a big difference. And if you're thinking thoughts within thoughts within the thoughts, it's just the same thing. It spirals you in to who you are. You can say that I am the thought creation of God that does the same thing, or I am thought creation, because that's who you are, your thoughts, and you've been created, and you're here to evolve. And that's your, really your life purpose here. It's everyone's life purpose. They may not think that way. Oh, I'm going to be a student. I'm going to be a scientist. I'm going to be this and that. Yes, that's all part of living. But you're here to evolve and learn and experience. And that is a big thing. And we're all of that nature. And we're all wonderful. We're all beautiful. We're all of that of who we are. And it's part of our evolution to get to that stage. And the more you come to that stage, the less the limitations that are there, the more you become connected. Totally agree. That's that's wonderful. Um, um, Irena wants to know, <clears throat> could you go over again, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the concept of copying? Can you can you show show us what is it is it just using intention and words like I am just saying <clears throat> I am copying this energy yeah it's, it's uh, pendulums are nice because they're tools but words will do the same thing uh <clears throat> and to play with uh, the best way to play with it is choose a color and use a pendulum let's just 
do something. <clears throat> color red. Let's look at the color red. Okay, I can take this pendulum and I'm going to get the wavelength. I'm coming to resonance with the color red. <clears throat> so I'll just get the string long, a little bit longer. And now that's the color red. Okay, it's going clockwise. I'll go to a piece of paper. And I'm just going to say, I'm going to draw a little circle on a piece of paper. I'm going to say, I am copying permanently the color red to the circle on this paper. I've done nothing more than do that. So the subtle energy of red now is in that paper. Now I'll go to that paper where it is, and the pendulum will go clockwise where, where, where I copied it. It won't go clockwise elsewhere. That's a simple demonstration of moving energy. Yes, you can do it by intention, because if you look at your own I am essence, what are you going to copy? You're in that space. But being in that essence is very easy. And you can know that you're in that essence because you just do that, just get the pendulum rotating and just repeat an affirmation. I am rethinking, rethink I am. I'm rethinking, rethink I am. I'm rethinking, rethink I am. And the pendulum will start rotating much faster. If I say it long enough, it'll come still because then I'm in the center of stillness. But as I'm doing that, my energy is higher and it'll remain higher for at least a little while until my mind wanders off again. <clears throat> and then if I, during that stage, if I'm now, I am copying my am energy and permanently placing it in my natural chi uh, area, then that happens. And is stating it and understanding that that's happening and not just making words and stating words. Uh, words are simple, but uh, you're stating it with your thought and intentions, things happen. And things do happen. Uh, and what I just did, did happen. Um, and I can go back to that space and uh, and I can find that if I just get back to color red, I'll, I'll find that color red on the piece of paper and I'll stay there. Hmm. So Fran asked, are we copying our chi into a place like a chi bank? And, and then, and she also says, can we ask our chi to protect us from harmful energy? So can you... <laughs> Use your intention uh, to. Well, I'll, no. I'll leave that. Can you can you ask your chi to well, do the chi, especially in the chi ball? That if you create a chi ball, it'll move around in your body. And we do exercises in which we move the chi to different parts of the body, to the organs and other areas, and and we cause the chi to rotate in a certain direction. And one is to balance, another is just to get energy into. And you can do all these types of things uh, with chi. But uh, yeah, it's learning to communicate with chi. Chi is something that is there, it's part of you, and you learn to communicate with it. Uh, and you may, at, at very low levels, it may, may or may not respond readily to you. But if you build it in the Qigong masters, they don't necessarily build in the Qi uh, Dantian area. It may still be there, but they build it and, um, and they'll put their hands over anything and, and people will feel that energy. Uh, and uh, I can send out a fair amount of energy nowadays just by putting my hands out because it, the energy is there. And you can do that uh, and you can copy the energy your own energy into the wristband, into a, a tape or anything else that you want to wrap around yourself. You can do all sorts of things. And the limitation is your, your, your imagination. You can do many, many things with uh, energies. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like cultivating chi <laughs> is really cultivating a partnership with this energy, right? <laughs> that will respond then to your intention the more conscious you are of it. Yeah, it definitely. More definitely. Than your, in your awareness. Um, Donna Lee wanted to know if we copy a BG signature or a set of BG signatures, then um, 
we could transfer that to a part of uh, the body for for healing, right? We could you could so you then can do that, or you draw it on a tape, piece of tape and put it on itself. Uh, all these things are are possible. Uh, in the uh, if you're copying the energy, because you're really copying energies uh, at this point, uh, uh, so you have to understand what what is that you're you're copying. You have to make the statement, "I am copying the energy." That is in this bio signature, um, and 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 do it in in that way, and also be careful of attachments too. Uh, some of the things that we found is that uh, things there are attachments in in life, and in energies, and sometimes they're not necessarily beneficial. Not, not you may not necessarily know about it, and that's the reason to always come into your I am essence. In your I am essence, a lot of these energies that are in you that uh, shouldn't be there can be dissipated. Or the Ho'onoponopono stating, uh, I am sorry, uh, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. All these things help to dissipate energies that uh, don't belong. And, and we're all exposed to things, whether we know it or not. And so it's always good to have these things uh, and to be knowing that oh, things are there and you can test for these things that again, that's a whole different subject matter. Uh, so. Um, so speaking of, you know, the sort of energetic um, I'm going to say interference patterns that you might pick up. Um, um, actually, Judith wants to know what are the most affordable, effective neutralizing means tested by Jerry? I'm not sure it was neutralized. Maybe that's for neutralizing Attach attachment energies or or disharmonies. I'm not sure exactly yeah. what she means by that, but well, you, if, if you know that there's a something that's uh, usually with a pendulum, you can find attachments. Uh, you're looking at the energies. You can look at colors, and usually they come in colors too. And uh, colors, uh, the, the the typical chart, um, uh, the hemisphere with all the colors in it. You can find, uh, you can ask the questions, uh, do I have an attachment? Uh, and, uh, and see if your pendulum goes counterclockwise and uh, you can locate it or you can find what color it is. Uh, and you can use a, uh, uh, if, there's, and you, if there's attachments, typically they're counterclockwise rotations. Clockwise, typically it's just not an attachment. Uh, you're just looking at the energy of, a lot of times you're looking at the counterclockwise uh, aspects of, of the energies and you can find that there is, there might be something. And if you're very good at looking at the, the parts of the body, you, can, you might be able to even locate where that attachment is. Uh, Meg is unbelievable in her abilities to, to do this. I'm sort of a novice at, at doing these things, but I can do it. Uh, it's just a, I don't look for these things as, as the way that she, that she can look for these things and find it. You know, a lot of what you're saying is I, I have seen in my, in shamanic training, a lot of sh shamanic practitioners do exactly what you're talking about. Right. I yeah. guess that's, yeah. Yeah. Shamanic is an amazing field and uh, there's so well, many things. It works with the energy as well. Yeah. Energies. Um. Lulu wants to know, can you compare the concept of chi versus BG3? Is this, um, how how are they similar? How are they different? Uh, chi is a life force energy in my mind. <clears throat> BG3 is a harmony, environmental harmony, balance, centering uh, energy. <clears throat> so it helps one to center an environment. Um, it may help in healing, but usually the healer is a person themselves healing themselves once they understand what the problem is. But uh, uh, harmony is the center of that circle. Harmony is getting a room so that uh, the energies are at a higher level of harmony. The level of BG3 that you measure in the room is higher. These are the ways that one measure changes it. And there are various ways to do that. There are lots of ways to, to increase the BG3 of the room. Uh, and typically, if you increase the BG3, you're also increasing the 369 because they sort of go together for the most part. 
um, they're not on top of each other, just like a shield on, on the um, <clears throat> a piece of paper with a magnet. So, but they are found uh, typically together. So most times you find them together, you try to put them together, then they'll sort of negate each other because they're not, you're sort of, sort of forcing two things together that don't belong together. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, well, that's, that's my answer, I guess. Yeah. Um, just as, as an observation, Alana said um, the Master Lee's practice of walking uh, on the grass immersed in sunshine and air reminds her of the um, panurythmy practice started by Peter Dunov in Bulgaria in 1922. So this, this, you know, and then I think now it's called earthing, right? That, that um, really connecting with the earth energy and um, the natural chi of the planet, right? And how we're, we're connected as energetic beings. Um, yeah. And we can draw from that. Yeah, I think all that is, is linked and then earthing and picking up electrons also is probably linked. And there's lots of things that are linked and we don't, can't even begin to understand all the things that are there. Uh, but that's what I do. But that's what I enjoy most is just exploring. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's a great field of exploration. Mm -hmm. It's so, it's so much fun. Um, and you are, when is your, when is your new book coming out? Well, we're, we're evolving in so rapidly. Every time we we're at a stage where we think, oh, we can hold it new things come into play. And so we're rewriting things and, and Meg is sort of reluctant to just jump in and give it where we are, but we have to do that at some point uh, because a lot of things have happened and there's a lot of new inter information that the world should know about. On May 19th or thereabouts, uh, the world changed and uh, energies changed in a wholesale way. Uh, it's like waking up one morning and you're a blonde and now you're a brunette. Uh, your eyes used to be blue and now they're brown. On an energetic level, that is what was happening, but it's so subtle, unless you're looking for it, you don't see it. But things are happening to us that things that used to work for us no longer work for us because we don't need it any longer. Mm. We were advanced to another level, but we may not know that unless we test for that. So, but that is in fact happening. Uh, and I won't go into the details of that, uh, but uh, that is that is in fact what is happening to humanity right now. Yeah, a lot of people are, are feeling that kind of increased <clears throat> energy on the planet. And I know astrologically things are changing and, um, people are people are feeling it right yeah they're feeling it and we are measuring it uh, and uh, seeing it at another level and and I th I use this tool a heck of a lot because it gives abilities to look at the individual colors and it, it's the colors that are changing and the location of the colors are changing and the interchange of about energies auric fields yeah, we're looking at the feels of a person and we're looking at the person themselves also. And uh, we're we're all changing in unbelievable ways and don't know it because physically we look the same. But our surroundings is different, our environments is different, the earth is different. Um, the energetic the energies, structure. The IR yeah. energies in the, into the earth used to be a certain number of feet. It's you know, going much, much deeper nowadays. All these things are changing. Animals are changing, and they used to be a certain way, and they're changing also. Um, most changes are probably within us because we are really changing. Well, it's it's the evolution of it's the evolution of humanity, but it's not just humanity that's evolving, right? The earth is evolving, everything we're, on the earth is all, evolving. All evolving, everything is evolving. Yeah, and it's and it's very exciting. Okay, I'm gonna do two more questions and then we're gonna call it. Um so Irina wants to know about that half sphere tool. It's a that's a radiesthesia tool that you that uh, you... oh yeah, it's uh, it becomes some radiesthesia and uh it's a hemisphere, and the hemisphere uh, uh, <clears throat> and it's taught in biogeometry also, by the way. You'll, you'll find this hemisphere. It, 
what the basis of that is that when the when sun shines on a prism, a triangular thing, it diffracts the light into the the, the uh, rainbow. When sunlight shines on a sphere, it diffracts the light into the subtle energies. And the subtle energies are represented by what's on, on this chart. So where the sun shines in is green and the opposite side is negative green. And one side is red and the other side is uh, uh, violet. So, but it diffracts it into these bands. <clears throat> and there are sub bands and sub bands be below that also. And you can't work with a sphere. Uh, so what they found is that in a hemisphere, the diffraction lines are all there without having the sphere present. So therefore, these lines are not arbitrary lines. They're set at certain distances apart. And uh, the center is there and the lines are set so that you can detect the energies. You can come into resonance with the color blue by going to the color blue and, and it coming into resonance with the color blue. You'll resonate with the color blue, actual color blue, but it's also resonating with all the harmonics of blue uh, ad infinitum. And I don't know where they are or what they are, but you're resonating with it because you're picking it up. And so you're picking up that resonance. Um, it turns out that all the elements have colors associated with it. And the patterns are there. But the patterns are changing all the time. So no one's figured out how to do, look at elements. Uh, I figured it out, or Meg and I have figured out how to do that. But no one else has. So we can look at rows and columns and things and find out things. We can look at the human frequencies. And that's an interesting piece of information. The human frequencies, when you look at it individually, you see all the colors individually. <clears throat> Astronauts go into space and they get very sick. That's because they don't have all the colors. Uh, and if you look at the PMF mats, again, new knowledge that no one else knows about, all the human frequencies are there, but you need all of them. And now you what have all the What is a PMF mat? Okay, pulse electromagnetic uh, mats. They, they sell these things in um, different price levels, and uh, but they give you human frequencies and it's uh, supposedly good for you. And it's good for you because it's human frequencies and the astronauts use it and people in space would use it and, and it's good for inflammation, et cetera, et cetera. So they sell these mats. What we've discovered is that what, well, at least what I've discovered is that these mats give all colors. All colors is something that now we are taking in. We are, we've become all colors. Before we had certain colors associated with us. You and I are now, for the most part, all colors. If we look at the chart and look at ourselves, we span the whole spectrum of colors. We're stronger in certain colors, but we span the spectrum. Different types of people span it in different ways. And I won't go into that because that's it's a whole new thing. But it, there are things there that are, are there and uh, the people who are evolving and are evolving are evolving into full color. I love mm -hmm. that. I love that, right? Where the, the continuum the, the is expanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. last question. It, can you, it, can you um, just one more time, in a sentence, what is the difference between BG3 and 369 energy? Okay. <clears throat> 369 energy is based upon more the concepts of creation and concepts of uh, gravitational and magnetic uh, in, in the sense that all matter, all created matter is of this, this nature. Uh, it has magnetic, Gravitational, the vortex in, vortex out. Vortex in is gravitational, vortex out is magnetic. So monatomic elements, you separate the elements out to individual aspects, it'll have that energy. Other things will have it because of other things associated with it. Creation, ohm, 
as it is part of creation. Yin yang is part of that old, that structure of, of the Taurus. So it has that energy, but it has two rotations. So it's bringing it into uh, balance. That's the, re that's the reason that there's balance in, in the yin yang structure. BG3 is a different animal altogether. It is when there's balance and harmony there. 369, by positioning themselves in a harmonious way, creates that energy of balance. You can have that without the 369. You have it in structures, numbers, uh, <clears throat> centers of a circle, centers of a 90 degree. They all have BG3. It's that centering, balancing energies. Uh, I'm okay. sure Ibrahim uh, Karim will just define it just that way, but this is just the way that my mind sort of sees things. So 369 is Taurus energy, right? That's what... Uh, I, I, that's one way to look at it. It's it's more than that, but it has but, relationships to that. And and other structures will have relationships to that. Uh, certain paintings will have relationships to that. But that's how I sort of see it. And that's not a full answer either. Sure. Okay. That's probably a 10%. Right. Very nuanced and, and complex energies, but... But good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this. So much, so much fun and so much um, to explore. You know, even I think um, it just feels like day by day, there's more to explore, you know, and um, I can't wait until your next book comes out and uh, we'll have you back to talk about that because I, I even, I just love the title, the birth of a new humanity. That This is what we're experiencing, right? This is what we're living through. Um, and I love that with these tools and with all of the things that we're exploring, we can do this consciously, right? We can bring our awareness to this process and, um, hope, hopefully do it with a little grace, <laughs> God willing. So, so yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, Jerry. And, um, everyone have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>